All right, guys, I need you to do me a little favor. Shh, don't tell my wife I'm borrowing her rolling pin here. And if her next batch of tortillas come out a little sandy, you'll be in on the secret and know why. Hello Silver fans, this is T and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment, and Silver Pours. T. Okay, let's see what we have to throw in the old crucible today. I was lucky enough to find some uh, silver shot at a uh, coin shop that I visited. So. Beautiful silver shot. Wish I had more of this. It's very hard to find. Pour that down into the crucible. So that's three ounces. Got some uh, buffalo rounds here. That would be four, five. And uh, this one just breaks my heart. Let me show you this. This was a channel round that I made and it did not meet my satisfaction. You see how it's just kind of an underpour here, not completely round, so close. But either way, that's gonna go into the old crucible as well. And you know, let's see what else. Oh, talk about goof ups. Here's a, a bar that was a drastic underpour and kind of messed up. So that's going in. Uh, just let, so let me let you know, you know, when you're doing silver pours, especially if you have any kind of standards at all, you are, you know, of course, going to want to uh, your creations to come out to your satisfaction. And, um, you know, a good portion of it goes right back into the furnace after, uh, you know, each time firing it up because of mistakes. And so, uh, this one was a gift from my good buddy, Pistol Packing Pilot. And uh, hey, PPP, thanks man, there you go. And let's see a few more. So hey, I'm melting a bunch of silver today. And uh, stay tuned, watch and see what I'm up to. In my constant quest to create cool stuff, I found myself on eBay and I found this uh, Sugar Skull mold, uh, stamped it with a little T there. And uh, this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, today, but I have two different methods that I'm going to try. Uh, the first one is a method that I've tried before that uh, you'll be familiar with if you've seen my other uh, videos. And the second method is a little bit different. I'm an experiment and that's uh, part of my constant quest to get better as a silver pourer. I'm gonna flatten this out, condense it, squish it down a little bit. And then I'm going to put uh, this mold here and squish it in there. So. All right, here we go. Right, now, before I do this, I'm going to use a little bit of baby powder. And, oh my gosh, I haven't used baby powder in a long time. My kids are, oh, yeah, my kids are grown. Here we go. And that will help uh, get the little mold to come out of the sand when it's time to pull it out. Smooth it out a little bit. Remember that smell. Do a little here. Here we go. trick this uh, stamp came with a little screw put in the back to well, lift it straight out <laughs> looks pretty good actually all right there is number one I'm gonna try that one in just a moment as soon as that silver heats up and in the meantime I'm gonna try a second method so instead of stamping the uh, sugar skull mold down into the sand this time I'm gonna take it I'm gonna powder it up just the way I want it. 
And then I'm gonna put the sand on top, basically burying the uh, sugar skull mold in the sand. I've seen it done both ways. I'm very curious as to uh, which method produces better results. So the other kind of difference with this is I am also, you know what, I'm gonna take a little bit before I even squish it down too much. I'm gonna take some of this sand in here. I'm gonna run it through this strainer right here. And so that way uh, I get uh, the best details. I, another little trick that I've learned. Um, and you may hear my part of my uh, security force uh, in the background. My dog's barking at something. Maybe another Amazon delivery uh, because uh, I'm constantly getting stuff uh, as my um, knowledge of silver pouring uh, improves. And uh, I, the more I learn, the more I realize I need to buy more stuff. But as you can see, uh, the sand is coming out in a way that it's nice and fine with no little, um, you know, pebbles or little chunks in it. I'm going to press this nice fine sand around my sugar skull. There we go. And I'm going to put this here and I'm going to put more on top, squishing it down even more. Back to the old rolling pin method. And I've used the hammer method before, uh, but my elbow's kind of beat up right now. And uh, many of the folks I watch on YouTube as I'm attempting uh, to learn about silver pouring seem to uh, swear by this method and prefer it over the hammer method. We'll see what works best for me. Okay, there it is. So if I can get it out. Ooh, nice and straight. Boy, that did come out good. Okay, let me show you what else I have cooking up. And just use the old rolling pin again. I'm gonna scrape some of the excess off of uh, this little muffin tin here. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna try something else, something I haven't done before. And so let's get the baby powder on there. And there's that, I'll spread that around. And let's get some baby powder on this little guy. Here is another sugar skull that I acquired. And I'm gonna try uh, using this, see what comes of it. In case you're wondering, I, I also actually even saw somebody ask a question not long ago on YouTube. Hey, what is a sugar skull? Why do they call it a sugar skull? And I am half Mexican myself. And so of Mexican descent, I know a little more than the average American about Mexican traditions. Although celebrating Dia de los Muertos is not something my family did per se. I know a lot of folks in Mexico uh, celebrate the Day of the Dead. It's uh, November 1st. It's always the day after Halloween. A part of that celebration is paying homage to the deceased and in remembrance and showing love. And part of that was uh, in the old tradition was uh, little candies made of sugar in the shape of a, a skull and for the dead, literally like on their tomb. So some of you saw the Disney movie. I think it's called Coco. There's a big part of that movie that revolves around the Day of the Dead. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna try to carefully squish this in and see what kind of imprint I can make. Again, you know, I'm at the very beginning of my silver pour career. I'm trying all kinds of stuff and we'll see what sticks. Stuff that I like to do and maybe I'm even better at will stick and other stuff will kind of come and go. So let's see what we can do here.
I kind of like the second one better, but uh, we'll see. Okay guys, hey, before I uh, pour the silver, just a quick shout out to Two Auto. They are the ones who hooked me up with this furnace. And uh, you know, if it wasn't for them hooking me up with this furnace, I wouldn't be making this video or hanging out on, in my garage right now, uh, pouring this silver. Oh boy, it's pretty heavy. Here we go. So shout out to Two Auto. Here we go. First sugar skull. Oh, that's gonna be a heavy one. Here we go. All right. Okay. Look at that. Close that back up in preparation for the next pour. Look at that flame. Okay. Special shout out to my daughter who is here with the second camera. Right in the ice. You see that? Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, man, already it looks pretty darn cool. Oh, this one's heavy. Oh, man. And it looks cool, too. Wait till I clean this up. Whoa. This is awesome. Hey, this is a fun hobby, I'll tell you that. If you've ever considered silver pouring, hey, go for it, man. I did, thanks to Two Auto, and I'm having fun out here. Now, one of these pours I, or uh, molds, I like better than the other. So I'm gonna pour that one first, just to ensure I have enough silver. And that's the one on the left. And there's not a whole lot of silver left. Oh, that was it. Just enough for that one. And that's all good for with me. There we go. Look at that. Molten silver. And you know, you never know what you're going to get. Now look at that little spill over there. And uh, hey, they'll all go back in the furnace eventually. But there she goes. I'm just so curious as to what it's actually going to wind up looking like. <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's an art form. You never know. Is it going to come out perfect? Is it going to come out distorted? And can I live with it? Or is it going to be the best pour ever? Let's try to make this the best scoop ever. Here we go. Into the, into the tin. And, uh, hey, let's see what we got. Are you ready? There's the last one. Hoo 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 hoo! Pretty darn cool, man. Can't wait to clean that up. Not perfect, but uh, we'll see what we got after we clean it up. And then this one, man, this is heavy. Whoa. Wow. Can't wait to clean this one up. I'll have to look back at the video footage to see which one was which. And then finally, oh, this one's even heavier. Dang, they both came out great. Wow. All right, guys, next step is to clean these guys up. And I've got uh, some water with some Dawn here, and I'll try to clean up that charred up sand and show you what we really got. Some of you have asked me about the possibility of purchasing my pieces and I have a piece up on eBay, it's one of my channel rounds and I just had a nice conversation with my good buddy Patriotic Stacker and he uh, started giving me the 411 on how to do a live video stream. I've never done one. I've never ever done a live video stream that I produce. I've been on other people's, 
but he gave me some tips and I'm going to uh, investigate that and perhaps we'll have a live auction and include uh, some of these pieces. Next step, and this isn't something that everybody does, but I use a, a rock tumbler to uh, give that beautiful, shiny, polished look. And that's my next step. Let me show you where it's at right now. <laughs> it looks pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, a little imperfection there. I actually think I can live with that. Um, and let's see. We'll toss this guy in here. It already has some water and some of this stuff called Shine Bright. I kind of copied the idea from uh, Silver Dragons, who was one of the folks that inspired me to start pouring in the first place. Now, let's check these other pieces. I'm going to let you be the judge here. The one on my right is the thinner pour of the two, and it's pretty significant, actually. Uh, the one on the right was the one where I squished down in my hand, or with my hand. The one on the left was the one that I placed on the cookie sheet and poured the sand around it. Um, I don't know, man, they, look, they both look really cool. I don't know if there's a significant difference in either one. Um, I don't know, what would you guys say? Left or right, which one came out better? And we're not done yet. We've got some little touch up to do. We've got some little sharp stuff to get off of there, a little filing to do. And then of course we'll clean these guys up in there in a moment. Well, before I tone this and stamp it up and all that kind of good stuff, I'm really curious as to how much it weighs. I'm going to guess four ounces. So I have it on ounces Troy. Whoa, five ounce or 5.2. Oh, yeah. Right in the middle. Look at that. Bam. I'm going to show you a little trick here. I don't think I've shown before. In order to get straight lines, uh, at least to attempt to get straight lines, I'm going to use a marker to figure out where I'm going to put my stamps nice and straight. There, I'll put 5.2. All right, my friends, I'm going to show you a little trick here. And it's pretty simple. I've got hot water on the Keurig right there. So it's not boiling, but it's pretty darn hot. I've got uh, just cold tap water there. That's a rinse. And right here, this uh, third little container contains some uh, water and baking soda. And that will be used as kind of a final step to neutralize the process of using this uh, liver of sulfur. This is uh, what gives this uh, the tone and you can play with this and do lots of things with it and lots of different effects. I'm going to start off with a couple of drops. One, two, eh, three drops with the hand. Eh, four. That's it. Four drops. Done with that. Put it away. And so what I'm going to do is a special uh, toning effect, colorizing effect that I've seen on channels where I was watching uh, jewelry making. This is about as far as I want to go. Um, you can see there's some crazy color in there. I do want to polish it up and shine it up so you can see the silver and so I'm going to use some sandpaper to knock some of this color off and again experiment put some sand in. that's 2000 grit the high spots are starting to pop all right here's the finished product there's the baby and uh, I went outside for some natural light. Uh, there's the daddy, 6.4 ounces, 
pretty cool. I can't tell you how pleased I am uh, with this entire process. I really like it, dig it, hope you do too. And uh, here's the mama with a little bit of toning, kind of just a subtle hint. It looks almost like a rose color uh, with some little glimmers of other colors, uh, you know, when you see it in certain light. Uh, but th hey, this was a fun process. There you go, 5.2 ounces. Fun process, and I really appreciate you guys watching, spending some time with me, maybe learned a little, and at the very least, enjoyed this video. Thanks, guys. Peace.